Looking at real vector spaces, we first have to see what these are made up of. So we're going to be looking at a set of objects, and we'll talk more detail about the objects later, but it's a set of objects on which two operations are defined. Addition between the objects and a scalar multiplication. Now, when we talk about scalar multiplication, we're talking about a real number. So a number scalar multiplied by one of the elements of this set of objects. Now we're talking about real vector spaces, so these scalars we're looking at are real numbers. All right, now if this set satisfies given conditions, and we'll get to the conditions shortly, on the addition and the scalar multiplication, then a set is called a vector space, and the elements of the set are called vectors. So we're going to refer to the elements of this set as vectors. Now, if you've had any encounters with vectors, your first encounter will probably be with displacement vectors. So those are vectors with direction and size, like the wind or a speed of an object and things like that. We are getting way more general here. So do not think of displacement vectors when we think of these vector spaces. It's simply a set of objects with two operations meeting given conditions. Then it is a vector space and the elements of that set are called vectors. So let's look at these conditions because it's quite a lengthy list. Now, depending on the text you are using, the conditions are the same for a real vector space. They may be arranged a little bit differently or named a bit differently, but that is these 10 axioms, we call them are all what we need for a vector space. So a vector space V over R, or a real vector space is a set of objects, and the objects are known as vectors, together with vector addition and scalar multiplication satisfying the following properties. So for any vectors in my set and scalars A, B, and C, the following must be true. Now you will see they're arranged in two columns. The first ones are called VA1 to 5 and then SM1 to 5. That refers to vector addition, so the first five are vector addition, and the second five are scalar multiplication. So let's take a look at them. Vector addition. The first one tells me that if I add two elements of my set, my result is again in the set. So this means that my set is closed under addition, however that addition is defined. Secondly, we've got the property of addition being distributive. So if I've got three vectors, u, v, and w, if this property holds, we say the addition is distributive, and this has to hold for V to be a vector space. Then, every vector space needs a zero vector. Now, do not think of this as the number zero, because it's a vector, so it really depends what is in my set of objects, and we'll look at more examples as we go. But this zero vector is one of those objects, so that zero vector has to be in the set, and it has to meet certain requirements, meaning if I add it, to any of the other vectors or any vector in the set, the vector stays the same. Then the fourth one is that I've got a negative for every vector, meaning that if I use this addition as it's defined, if I add the vector to its negative, I get the zero vector, whatever the zero vector is in the previous one. And the last one, we've got the addition being commutative, so u plus v, is equal to v plus u. So those are the five vector addition axioms. So let's look at the scalar multiplication ones. The first one is also about closeness. Any scalar times a vector must again be in the set. So the set must be closed under the scalar multiplication. And note here, we're not multiplying vectors. We are it's scalar multiplication. So it's a real number times the vector, however that's defined. Right, the second one, We've got the scalar times u plus v is a c times u plus c times v, similar to a distributive idea. And here we've got, if I've got two scalars a and b times the vector u, it must be a times u plus b times u. The fourth one, if I multiply a and b, now remember a and b are scalars, so these are just, just the product of two real numbers, and I multiply them and I multiply that with scalar multiplication with the vector u is the same as a times b u. And the last one says the number one. So that's just the real number one times my vector u, however scalar multiplication is defined. If I multiply a vector u with one, I have to get u back. And once a set meets all 10 of these requirements, we can say it is a vector space. 
Now, vector space is not only a set, it's a set with the two operations. So please take note, when we talk about a vector space, we can't just say the set of real numbers is a vector space. We have to say the set of real numbers with addition defined as following and scalar multiplication defined as following. Now, there's a lot of standard definitions for addition and scalar multiplication, but there's some different definitions as well, and we're going to look at all of these. Now, the first vector space we're going to look at is R3. R3 are ordered triplets, U1, U2, U3. I've got two elements here of my set V, KB is scalar. Now, vector addition and scalar multiplication is defined in the standard way. So what do we know by that, mean by that? Well, you've worked in R2 with ordered pairs. You might have worked in R3. Now, the standard addition is U plus V and vectors. The notation, we put a little arrow on top to show that it's not just a scalar, that it's a vector. Sometimes a bar is used, sometimes bold is used. The notation doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent. So U plus V is defined as add the first two components together, U1 plus V1, U2 plus V2, and U3 plus V3. That is how we define the scalar addition, the vector addition. That's the standard way. Scalar multiplication k times a vector u is just ku1, ku2, and ku3. So that's the standard way to define it, as we know how to use ordered pairs, ordered triplets, or bigger than that. All right, now, if we want to show that this set V, together with these operations, is a vector space, we will have to go through all 10 of these axioms. Now, it's a tedious process, and I'm not going to go through this process with all 10 axioms every time, but I just want to give you a feeling for how it works. So what we need to do is we need to be systematic and do one at a time. However your text defines them or names them, take them one at a time. So here we've got two. We've got U and V in elements of the vector space V. Let's define another one. Let W also be in V where w is equal to w1, w2, and w3, and let a, b, and c be scalars. So once I've got all of this together, this is what I need. I've got my addition and multiplication defined, so let's look at the first axiom. The first one says that u plus v must be in my set v. What does this mean for this set? This means if I add two triplets, ordered triplets together, I must end up back in that set. So adding two ordered triplets must again give me an ordered triplet. But we can see as u plus v is defined, it gives me, it's, I'm just copying from the line above, but I again get an ordered triplet. So it's not complicated to show that that is in R3. So we're happy with that one. It's closed under addition. The second one, is the associative property. So I'm going to show that u plus v plus w is equal to u plus v plus w. But if I look at u plus v plus w, that'll just be u1, u2, u3 added to what does v plus w look like? v1 plus w1, v2 plus w2, v3 plus w3. And you can quickly see that this is going to work out very nicely because this is just u1 plus v1 plus w1, u2 plus v2 plus w2, and u3 plus v3 plus w3. And we know addition, these are all real numbers inside there, so addition of real numbers is associative, so that's u1 plus v1, I can associate those two together, plus w1, u2 plus v2 plus w2, and U2, U3 plus V3 plus W3. The reason I can make that step is because addition of real numbers is associative. And that just gives me U plus V plus W. So we're good on the second axiom. The third one says I can find a zero. And yet again, it's going to be a very obvious zero because I'm working in R3. I'm going to say, well, let my zero vector be the order triplet 0, 0, 0. I can see that's in R3, so that is good. 
So I need to look at u plus 0. What is u plus 0? Well, u1 plus 0, u2 plus 0, u3 plus 0. 0 is just a real number, so we know that's just u1, u2, u3, which is back at u. And that's the property I want to show. I also want to show that 0 plus u gives me u, and you can fill in those gaps. It is very straightforward. All right, so my fourth axiom. And it might help having these axioms listed close by so you do not forget which is which, is the negative. So if I say u is just any value, any element of v, if I say let minus u be equal to minus u1, minus u2, and minus u3, also a very obvious definition of the negative, that is in R3, and I can show that u plus minus u also gets me back to the zero vector, because that's where I want it, because that's just u1 minus u1, u2 minus u2, and u3 minus u3, which gives me 0, 0, 0. So that gets me to the zero vector. And you can do the same for minus u plus u. You can show that that also gives you the zero vector. All right, and the fifth one is the commutativity. u plus v is equal to v plus u. Well, u plus v is u1 plus v1, u2 plus v2, u3 plus v3. And we know addition of real numbers is commutative, so that's v1 plus u1, v2 plus u2, and v3 plus u3, which gives me v plus u. Now, Take note, we've only been through the first five of the ten axioms, and this is our first example. So this video is going on a little bit long, because going through these ten axioms takes a bit of time. It takes a long time to get through these ten, so I'm not going to go through them in every example. So this, this video will just cover this example, and then we'll look at some other examples and just look at smaller aspects from it. All right. Scalar multiplication. The first one tells me that it's closed. So C times U. Well, we know that Cu1, Cu2, that's how it's defined, Cu3, and that's in R3. So we're happy that it's closed. The second one is C times U plus V. We want to show it Cu plus Cv. Well, that is C times U1 plus V1, U2 plus V2 u3 plus v3, which gives us c times u1 plus v1, c times u2 plus v2, c times u3 plus v3. And that is equal to cu1 plus cv1, cu2 plus cv2, cu3 plus cv3, because multiplication over the real numbers are distributive. And that is just C times, excuse me, C times U plus C times V, which we wanted. So it's all good. We've got three left. The third one for the scalar multiplication says A plus B times U gives me AU plus BU. Well, that is just A plus B times U1, A plus B times U2. and a plus b times u3 and we can multiply that out and show that that is equal to au plus bu which is what we wanted sm4 yet again i'm not going to go through this one thoroughly it's a b times u you can write that out and you will see that'll give you a times bu and the last one is 1 times u. Now, 1 times u is just 1 times u1, 1 times u2, 1 times u3, which gives me u back. So we're happy it meets all these requirements. So v is a vector space.
with the addition and scalar multiplication as it is defined. All right, so in the next videos, we're going to be looking at some more vector spaces. We're not going to go through all the axioms every time, but I just want to show you things that you can recognize and notice about vector spaces.